The following is a presentation of the Control Trends Podcasting Network. And one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Smile for the camera, big dog. Hi, welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart building's video cast and podcast for the week ending May 12th, 2019. This is episode 315, where we talk about all things smart controls and HVAC controls and try to give you HVAC and smart building control news you can use. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know, you don't know. And those that do know tend to know how to make more money in this business. And to help you out with this, <laughs> who goes to mind, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Kenny Smyers, that guy who's in the know from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kenny, welcome to the show, Big Dog. Well, thank you, Eric. But uh, you, you more or less implied that I'm in the know, so that means I'm in the money. I'm in the dough, and I, I don't know about all that. I'm still I'm working. I'm a working man here. And uh, well, no, so so you, you're you're in the know, on the go to make the dough. Oh, well, it's, it's got the alliteration quality there. It does. It does. So I was thinking about changing my name. See what the community thinks about to uh, either Eric von Eric or Eric the Social Experiment Stromquist. You like any of those resonate with you talking about alliterations? Uh, well, I like Aaron Vaughn, but Aaron Vaughn Eric doesn't work, you know, because that means Eric from Eric, you know, so you'd be Eric from Vaughn Atlanta or Eric Vaughn whatever, but not Eric again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Propus just doesn't have quite quite a ring to it, but I'm working on it. Brent Burroughs, our young gun, him and Aaron Gorka, uh, mm -hmm. Mandy, <laughs> about Next Generation Innovation. Their podcast is rocking. Those guys are irreverent, fresh, and uh, fun to listen to. And they were, they were talking about, you know, the social experiment. They thought that would be a good name. But uh, listen, dude, we got an awesome show today. And you and I, uh, before we get into our guest, you and I are, man, we're just sort of packing our bags. We're loading up. We're getting ready to go. We just got back from Detroit uh, about a week ago. We posted a lot of stuff from Detroit. Still have some more to post. A uh, couple of things we did up here, Kenny, and I want to reach out to my audience, our audience. I want to reach out to our audience right off the bat and say, hey, look, we did some cool stuff that people really liked at ControlsCon, something we'd never done before. We actually live streamed a good part of the conference to both Instagram and to, well, actually, next time we're going to do it to YouTube. So two things, two requests. One, follow us on Instagram. We'll put a link in, in the show notes and also Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't, because one of the things that's exciting about this, Kenny, is, is if you can't be at these conferences, and we're going to be doing it at EasyIO, we're going to be doing it uh, at Haystack next week, and we'll be doing it at RealCom IBCon. If you can't be there, we're going to do everything we can to make you feel like you're there, right? In addition to reporting on it and having videos that we'll share at a later date, man, if we can do the live stream, that's cool stuff. So all you basically have to do is uh, follow us on Instagram and follow us. Uh, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So what do you think about that, dog? Well, I think, you know, they, we're talking about social media and the advancements of the technology and the, the streaming, the live streaming, uh, you know, was unheard of. And, and, you know, if you told somebody we could live stream an event three years ago or four years ago, you just said, yep, sure. And, and, and brought in a whole bunch of equipment to do it. Yeah. But nowadays, because the technology and the footprints got so smaller, it's, it is feasible and it's remarkable how many events uh, like you said, that you know, you can get touch and feel, and, and get the participation value by by accessing the live streaming that uh, is, is possible now. So it's a great, great feature. I think it's great. Well, it is, and, and I think you know part of what Kenny and I are doing when when I talked about being the social experiment. I mean, what Kenny and I are kind of trying to do for our industry is we're trying to be at the very least be the marketing experience. I think you know a lot of people that we talk to, they got really, really good uh, marketing departments. Most of them are kind of, you know, like, like us, they like us are trying to uh, figure out, you know, where social media fits in. Right. I mean, I think most of us are on LinkedIn, which is a cool platform, but I don't know about you. And I'd be interested in comments from our audience. I mean, you know, it seems like so much stuff just gets thrown on the wall up there. And I'm curious how much engagement people are getting from LinkedIn, but you know, in, in theory, it would seem like that would be absolutely the best platform for our businesses, B2B type stuff. But, uh, you know, Facebook, from our experience, is kind of, uh, the only thing it's really good for is Facebook groups. I mean, you know, or old people posting pictures of their grandkids and stuff like that, or kids in my case. So what we've been exploring, what we're, we're endeavoring to do is to sort of get out front with the social media aspects, figure out what works, and then be able to share it with, 
you know, anybody that's interested. So we're, we're kind of on a mission in that regard. Right now, the one that's fascinates the most, us the most is Instagram. And uh, the reason being Instagram has that aforementioned uh, live streaming feature. And dude, I got to tell you, there was a guy, uh, and he was a refrigeration guy. And man, he was on Instagram. I was watching him last week. He's on Instagram, and he's doing product demos in his shop. And then he's, then he's making offers. And people are going, okay, he'll give me 25 bucks for this, you know, normally 50 bucks or whatever. So he's actually selling on Instagram, and people are engaged with that. So, you know, that might be the one thing that, uh, that we can do to sort of out cool Amazon, maybe take Amazon out. So, I mean, I'm not saying that we would do that now, but I'm saying that is coming. Instagram is coming. Uh, Facebook, I think is a thing in the past. Twitter. Oh my gosh. Uh, who goes on Twitter anymore? I mean, I, I put stuff up on Twitter, but the engagement on Twitter is just sort of not there. So the things Kenny and I are focusing on in our industry, and we're trying to sort of be out front and figure this out is, you know, how do you engage an audience? That's one piece, but more importantly, how do you convert an audience so that your audience actually starts buying from you? So those are the things we're going to start, uh, start working on. As a matter of fact, Kenny and I are putting together a newsletter now, uh, a marketing newsletter, which just be marketing topics. It'll probably be about a month before we get it up, but where we, if, and you'd have to re-sign up for that. If you were interested, you'd have to sign up, but we'll have a sign up because we don't want to inundate people with stuff they're not interested in. But stay tuned for that. If you think it's a good idea, let us know in comments. Kenny and I always like encouragement. And Kenny, I've been talking a lot here. So I'm going to sure have been. Give me, give me, give me, give me a, give me a uh, take a breath. That mic. No, I, to your point, uh, well, I did want to interrupt you and, and I agree that there's a, uh, a transition. Uh, we have many discussions. We talked to a lot of marketing folks and there's a, there's a constant search for the greatest efficacy in marketing and the amount of money being spent in marketing and, and the, the, the perception that there's no, value in, in some of the old school marketing you know of course i think you always need a little bit of it you know uh we were told by a major manufacturer there's a trade show coming up they don't take anything to the trade show anymore they used to take catalogs and then they they ran their course and then they took uh thumb drives usb sticks to give people with their catalog catalogs and marketing information on that even that these people believe it has, has run its course. The people, uh, the USB sticks never see the light of the computer. They never get turned, you know, they're not used because everybody is using the direct access going on their website and they believe that they have the metrics that justify eliminating paper products, you know, paper collateral, marketing collateral in, in a catalog form. Now USB thumb drives have seemed to run their course. Nobody's giving out pens anymore. So, I mean, just some of the more basic things that we have learned over marketing over the last 35 years, it's really interesting the flux that you're talking about. And, 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 and whoever can continuously be in the forefront and know where to spend your dollar, where you have the greatest impact, uh, is certainly going to be a champion in any organization, but particularly the ones that we're in. The HVAC world, we've got constant product updates, constant, uh, you know, uh, changes, a constant, uh, you know, need for periodic refreshments. And, and we were at a Detroit uh, Controls Con, we talked about the Raven, how people are so overwhelmed now with the digital world that even yeah. they can't stand the noise that's being made on their phone and they get so many updates. There's so many superfluous uh, emails and, uh, and text messages now that you need help from that even. So, uh, you know, that Raven product that they're coming up with, you only get it when you need it and it pushes out, you can't come back in. Right. So, I mean, some neat well, stuff. No, no, it is neat stuff. And, you know, we've said this on the show before, but I think it bears repeating. I mean, if you don't have a great product, you're not even in the conversation. There are a ton of people with great products out there. If you don't have great pricing and great technical support, you're not even in the conversation. There are a ton of people that have those. <laughs> and to your point, people are so inundated with so many choices that I say, and we've said this before on the show, Kenny, the marketing people right now and the messaging, your brand messaging is the most important thing you can be doing right now, assuming all those other things are equal. That's going to be your differentiator. Salespeople, you got to have them. But I mean, all these companies we work with, they all have great salespeople. But, you know, how do salespeople get the opportunity to get in front of people? Having salespeople uh, make cold calls. I know for my business, it's the biggest expense I have. I, I've got to have them. So when we have a hot lead and somebody really is interested and has money and is a qualified lead, they've got to go in and close the sale. So uh, let me give you an example. And, you know, whether you know, you know, Kenny knows this, but our audience might not. I have been making a, you know, huge study of, of how all this works. I've been to a couple of uh, marketing seminars on it and it blows me away. The younger, our younger audience gets it. They know how it works. Okay. So there's, a, there's this guy that I follow, uh, young guy, he's 28. All right. Talking about Instagram. He came up with this deal and, uh, on Instagram for $9 and 99 cents a month, 
Okay. And he, he started this thing a month ago. Basically what he'll do is you get a one-on-one -on -one mentoring with him, which basically means he's got a zoom meeting once a week. Okay. And when you, when you sign up, he had like 10 videos already done that you could watch. So you got in on it. So he started out in short order. I think the first week he had 10,000. He only marketed through Instagram. He had 10,000 people that signed up the first week. He had 100,000 the first month. They're predicting to have a million people attending this that he's able to influence, okay, in six months' time. So think about that. Using Instagram, okay, with the right formula, which yours truly and Kenny are learning how to do, he has a tremendous influence, but he's pulling in. If he gets a million at $9 a month, I don't know the math on that, Kenny, but I think that's $9 million uh, a month that he'll be pulling in for an hour webinar once a week. Well, that sounds pretty sound uh, mathematics. You know, Eric, and to your point, uh, it's interesting because uh, I know you're excited about that and I haven't caught up to it, but you know, I, I, I was thinking too in, in our travels here recently, I actually uh, uh, joined this uh, small SBA, the Small Business Administration, uh, and then uh, did the old school thing. So I, I filled out the paperwork, got uh, elected or nominated or chosen for the emerging leader schedule. And this is the old school. This is going back and, and they all, all have the social media stuff and all these people that are, that are owners of companies. Uh, they have these mentoring groups and, 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 and we're talking exactly what you're saying, how Instagram, uh, you know, and live uh, streaming and, and whatever. But then there's this, there's, this, there's this core of people that are very successful that really believe that networking is the thing going to regional meetings, going to local meetings, going to national meetings and doing those, like we're talking about with real common IBCon and, and we're going to talk about ECIO, the world conference here, that that is the greatest form of current social networking collateral. That's where you can do the most benefit to the greatest number of people that are uh, esoterically involved in your, your organization or your business. So it's kind of I, interesting. I, I, I think you're right. I think you have to have both. Right. And then here's the question I'd ask our community. Uh, and Kenny, I've talked about this before too. It seems like, you know, you've got, uh, you know, the older guys like Kenny and the younger guys like me. No, <laughs> now, if you're a marketing person, listen, my heart goes out to you because you've got the more traditional people that are in the industry that, that are the ones that are your loyal customers. They've still, been around calling the, still calling the shots with them with the green stuff, you know? Right. They are. But then, well, yes and no. And then you've got the younger folks coming on that need to be marketed to differently. And if you look at like, you know, the guy at ACI, the stuff he's putting together, if you look at guys like Tim Vogel, I mean, you know, you know, a lot of these companies are bringing the younger blood in because that's the group that's coming in. That's your future. So, I, I agree. I, yeah, so, I agree. So I, I think, you know, again, if you're interested, uh, we'll have a link. We'll, we'll be creating a newsletter. The other thing Kenny and I are willing to do, if you guys are interested in just throwing this up against the wall to see if it sticks, is we could do a Zoom meeting where we could have you guys come in. We could share some of the stuff that we've learned if you're interested. So, again, if you're interested, put interested in comments. And, Kenny, I'll tell you what, a guy that is not only interested, but one of the most interesting guys around and somebody that uh, – I think he's a combination of an old guy and a young guy. And I'm not talking about Ken Sinclair. I'm talking about our next guest, who is a combination of Ken Sinclair, a little bit younger guy on the old side and a little bit older guy on the young side. How about introducing our guest this week? All right. Well, you know what? I just wouldn't have, right? I want to take a real quick uh, back step, back pedal. Um, when you talk about marketing people and some of the new uh, incredible things that uh, we're working with, Mickey Mantis uh, at Siemens oh, yes. and, and how, but imagine if you're responsible and you've got to put a global, uh, you know, presence you know and, and whatever you're doing is not just for like north america anymore but you've got to make this thing work across you know multiple cultures multiple right. you, know, uh, you know interest areas and, and multiple technologies so i, I just uh, again the hats off to the people but uh we want mickey manis to come on the show though because she is doing some great stuff i want that guy from aci to come on the show he's doing some great stuff we posted some of his videos and what they're doing so you know it's it's not that we don't have really clever people in our industry because we right. do Mm -hmm. It's just that I'm, I, I kind of think I, you know, maybe the, maybe the marketing people aren't being appreciated as much as they should because they are the ones they can, they can, they can, um, can have your growth do this or this. Well, you're right, because like you said, everybody's got an extraordinary product platform. Everybody really has retold things. You're not around if you don't. Yeah. So, but it's, it's the people telling the stories now. It's the people getting in front of the other people that influence uh, behavior and influence purchasing decisions. That that's really an ongoing, uh, you know, uh, 
puzzle or ongoing, you know, challenge or ongoing, whatever, because now, like you said, too, is you have the multiple age groups. You've got the people that are in the, the gray, what do you call them, gray hairs or whatever. And then you've got the new guys, the new girls coming in looking for a fit for their, their tastes. and their Dude, I, I got to tell you something. I've said this before and I'll say it again. And, and this should be written down. Sales, especially in our industry is the easiest world is the easiest job in the world to do poorly in the most difficult job to do well. And what I mean by that is, dude, I can't, I mean, how many, how many times, you know, you send your sales guys out and they can't get into seeing but they leave a product line sheet, right? You know, it's just, but to do it well, to be able to be effective. Yeah. You have to have the product knowledge, but there are a lot of people that have product knowledge, but they don't have the skill set. And there are processes that if you understand, I know with our salespeople, we, you know, we teach them a completely different model. I mean, and, and it is, it is literally based on, um, well, trying to get no first. I'll give you a hint because, uh, but listen, I digress. If you guys are interested in sales stuff, you can reach out and ask me and Kenny too. And, yep. uh, we did that thing at Siemens that time with Scott Hamilton. Remember when we were talking about sales and mm -hmm. he went and stopped the meeting, got everybody to come in from all the different groups <laughs> to listen to us. It was pretty good. Well, you know, again, it's not like we're not trying our best to, to get some mastery of it, you know, and, and, and we're not, we have a personal vested interest in it. We have a professional uh, vested interest in it. And we have, a, you know, just a, a, a control trends, you know, premier interest in it because we're tracking down the trends and marketing has surfaced up to be, you know, we can always say trade shows can't live with them, can't live without them. Well, marketing can't live with it, can't live without it. It's one of those ones where it could be your best friend, it could be your toughest mystery to solve, or it can be. Uh, you know, the thing that makes, makes your product surge out in front of everybody, moves the needle, gets you in the in premier consideration zones because you're, you're using all the tools, you're going to the right meetings, you're meeting the right people, and you're doing the right presentation. And, and these folks that are doing this are, are leaving, you know, blue water behind their competitors, you know. Yeah, I tell you what, we got to get some marketing folks on the show because I really, I really think that that's got to become part of, um, you know, what we provide here is, is, is marketing insights and marketing trends too because that is where it's changing. I mean, I think I told you about going to that pod fest, which is not a porn thing. It was about podcasters from around the world. And dude, I'm going to tell you something, man. There's people showing their bank accounts. Podcast moved the needles. Social media moved. I saw it. I was there. I, I came in late, but I, I got to walk around with you. And, and I was visibly taken by this 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 new form of uh, marketing. marketing media, yeah. you know, this, yeah. this new, it's, it, it, you know, and in fact, you, you had talked me into buying the microphone for my iPhone there. If you remember, yeah, you, that's right. I did. You, do you ever use that? I've always used it, man. That's right. That's what we'll be using. I used it down at Trier when I did that recording, uh, that's when I was uh, control did. trends news yeah. from, uh, exactly. Ford and I yeah. That. So, all right, brother, let's, let's bring our guest on. <laughs> Come on. All right. I'd love to, sure. We have Jim Young, the founder CEO of Realcom group. Uh, Jim is one of the premier forces in all industries, not just the Realcom, uh, real estate industry, but building automation too, and building, uh, you know, intelligent, smart buildings. I think Jim has coined many of those uh, words and, and verbiages that we use to describe smart, intelligent, connected buildings. But Jim's also a Hall of Fame inductee last year. Uh, the impact he's made has already been recognized. Uh, he's a great community uh, guy. He's, he's a great person as far as the, you know, telling you what you call it, a prophesizer of the, of the future. He tells us where we're going to go and we run behind him. You know, Kenny, the show, Jim. You know, hang on a second, Kenny. I'm going to add a little something to that because I think what Jim Young is, is man, if you were a prospector back in the wild west, Jim is the guy that's showing you where the gold is. So, and there I think you go. you're not going to real come. I become man. It's like, you're not going where the gold is. So with that, Jim Young, welcome to our show. Wow, I don't know how I follow that, guys. That's uh, <laughs> I'm a pretty humble guy. I don't like that kind of stuff. So sorry Thank about well, that. It's kind of true, huh? It's kind of kind of real. So yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you say that you know I can see the future. It's really simple. While you guys are busy doing what you do so well, I'm out there poking around, right? That's what I do. I lift up rocks. I talk to people. I, you know, I look at products when nobody cares about them, and and then you know, over the years, I have gotten reasonably good at spot in something that I think makes some sense. And then here's the magic. You just, you take that little wave in the middle of the lake and you have to believe that someday it's going to impact the configuration of the sand on the beach. It's going to take momentum. It's going to move down a path. And eventually that, that, that wave in the middle of that ocean will come all the way to land and disrupt the sand on the beach. And, and I've just seen that over and over and over again. So now I know that's how it happens. And so, well, well, listen, you know, 
what I want to stress to our community is there is a, a real life thing called first mover advantage, meaning that if you're the first, one of the first people to move into a new space or take advantage of a new opportunity by default, you have a huge lead on anybody that tries to follow you. And, you know, Jim, we, we sort of talk about you pointing the way to the goal because you have predicted a lot of great stuff in the past, but we got a show coming up. You got the real com Ivycon show coming up, but let me ask you a question. What are you seeing that, uh, that people that want to get that first mover advantage might want to be at your show to check out? Yeah. So that actually, that's a long question, but I'll try to give you some context. So in 2002, that would be 17 years ago, we literally put on paper the concept of smart, connected, high performance, intelligent, sustainable building, right? And this was not the building world that we all knew. And this was not BAS. This was not one system, one building, one manufacturer. This was a place where a, a, an IP network was thrown on top of a building and all these disparate different systems from hundreds of different manufacturers connected onto this IT network and became this unified system. That, that, because I came from the IT background, that's how I saw this thing coming down. That was 17 years ago. So for 17 years, we've been talking and you know, you know, people were making some moves and, and we had some success stories, case studies. We had little companies and then we had GSA come in, big mover. We had Microsoft, Daryl Smith come in, big mover. And, and then the cat was out of the bag and even though it wasn't mainstream, more and more people said, this makes sense. Well, I'll tell you, this year at Realcom and IBCon specifically, this is the year that will go down in history as the, the time we saw that vision realized to the next level. The convergence of IT, OT, and IoT, and between what Microsoft's doing with their Azure Sphere platform and the 5G technologies that we've got coming, which by the way, are not looking they're looking outside to make sure your cell phone works, but for the first time in history, they're really looking at what happens inside. So you got communications layers changing, you've got uh, uh, chip technologies in devices changing, you of course got the cloud, and, and what Microsoft is going, and by the way, they're gonna have 30 people in their booth in their pavilion, 30 partners. Wow. Okay? These are people that, that weren't there last year. This ecosystem, they, I think they had eight last year, so within one year, it's gone from eight to 30 and they have more, they just sold out the pavilion. There's no more room, right? So if you're an integrator and you've been working with all the major Johnson, Honeywell, Siemens, you know, and, and I've used to a certain story or, or um, methodology on building automation, one vendor, one system, this is a paradigm shift in the industry. This is, this is a shift that if you don't get on, you will miss an opportunity of a lifetime. It might be a little scary at first, but the opportunities are bigger, more complex, make more money, have more fun, more interesting. Um, but this is a taconic shift. And it's happening this year in 30 days or less. Wow. Four, more than four weeks. Now, now, why do you say that, Jim? What is so different about this compared to business as usual? Well, we, we had a couple different worlds competing for this smart building, right? We had the old traditional methodology, one building, one system, one manufacturer, one set of wiring you know, to this system, one set of wiring. Never did they talk, never did they integrate, never did they interoperate. And all of a sudden, um, you know, we've been talking again for 17 years. That doesn't make any sense. You need this network and then you got to put all this stuff on it and you normalize data and you secure data. And from an IT perspective, it made sense. Five, seven years ago, Internet of Things shows up. What's Internet of Things? Oh, we're going to connect cars and we're going to connect refrigerators. That was the big, big hypey push. Well, little by little over the last five years, people are taking it serious. I saw a demo last week, uh, actually this week, um, where Starbucks is taking a little micro uh, controller, putting it in all of their coffee makers, creating a secure cyber protected connection to the Wi-Fi networks inside Starbucks, taking it back to the Azure cloud and being able to measure coffee in all of their locations worldwide at a level of granularity, applying artificial intelligence that you've never seen before in the history of the world. So if they can do it to a coffee maker, they can sure do it to a doorknob, an HVAC system, a lighting system, a parking gate, all the building systems that we've been automating for years using all sorts of different systems, now have a unified system, a methodology uh, to connect. 
this is going to accept, this is what the big guys who have to deploy globally have been waiting for. You know, a standard architecture, a, a, a cyber a protected architecture, a place to normalize data, a place to apply cool things like analytics and digital twin visualization. Um, I think they're going to bring that, that standardization and that scalability to smart buildings that we've just never seen. And if you're not at our conference, I'm not just trying to pitch you to come to a conference, but if you're not aware of this and you don't, and I've been getting uh, debriefed the last week, um, little by little, and the more I learn, the more I say, boy, if I was an integrator, if I was in the smart building industry, I got to know about this. No, no well, well, you know, Jim, it's a, uh, it sure is uh, an inspiring, awesome, uh, you know, concept that, you know, we're going to have a paradigm shift because uh, you've been doing this 20 years. Uh, and, uh, in fact, last year you celebrated the 20th anniversary. And, and, uh, and I just received my copy of this, uh, this marvelous uh, Realcom Edge document that is full of almost, it's like an encyclopedia of technology and how it's coming to us. And, and, and even though uh, Microsoft Azure is, is, is a very large component of you have a whole lot more that you're going to present at the Realcom I Become oh, yeah. show. And, and I think you know, what we're trying to do is inspire people from the Control Trends community to attend. You know, we, we are going to conclude this with a, we have a promo code that we're going to make sure everybody's aware of. Well, let me, let me break it down in a minute or two for you. Okay, so Super. 20 years, like you said, um, pushing the elephant up the hill, if you will. You know, technology applied to the built environment, not an easy sell, pretty stubborn industry. But we, it, last year was a milestone, okay? We, we 20 year celebration. Uh, fast forward to Nashville, four and a half weeks from now. We'll have over 2,000 people. They will come from 25 to 30 countries. So what that means is the smartest people from around the world about smart buildings assemble. It will start with a golf tournament. So if people want to golf, that's fun. But also that first day, uh, we have five or six tours to some smart buildings in Atlanta, or in, in Nashville, I should say. So what that means is you come a day early and you can go poke around some really cool smart buildings and literally touch things and talk to the people who built them. Then we start with pre-con. If you're in the, in the um, smart building world and you're not at that cyber forum, you're doing your clients a disservice. We will have some of the best brains been working for five years trying to figure out how to con uh, protect smart connected buildings. And uh, if you're not hearing that conversation, you're doing your clients a disservice. Then we go into seven or eight other pre-conference events. We'll have CIOs in one room, integrators in another room, COOs, boot camps, higher ed, MIT, Stanford, all these different groups meet and they talk about their specific type of real estate, you know, a college campus or an office building or a mall. Uh, and then the integrators, we have the Integrator Summit, which is absolutely designed for your community. Microsoft will be presenting in that session, as well as a host of other vendors. Then we go into our welcome reception, kind of a party to welcome everybody. We're in Nashville. We're going to have fun, have some good music. Next morning, general session. Just one part of the general session is going to be Hudson Yards, the new big project in New York City, smart. ExxonMobil, new corporate headquarters, global portfolio, Facebook's Intelligent Campus. Uh, and um, Brookfield, one of the, I think the second largest real estate owner in the world, buildings all over the world, uh, applying a, a big innovation strategy to that whole portfolio. And now we're, we, the other part we'll announce next week, uh, another uh, addition to the general session, gonna be huge. Then we have 150 sessions over the next two days, IBCon and Realcom. Everything from edge devices, building networks, uh, what's the building operating system? What's the latest and greatest in HVAC? What's the latest and greatest in parking? So we have these showcases. Uh, and then the final day, Friday morning, we devote to the uh, Smart Building Best Practice Showcase. We'll have 35 to 40 of the world's best smart buildings on display, not literally, but little poster boards and the people who are involved with those smart projects will sit for an hour and a half or so and tell you everything about them. So it's like a show for smart buildings. It looks like they're going to send two or three people because, you know, I've been to your, your Realcom conferences and I'll tell you what, Eric and I have split. We didn't know which way to go because we wanted to see both events and sessions. I mean, uh, it's. Well, so, well, let me. So this year, the exhibit floor is 20 percent bigger and it's sold out. The program is about 30 percent bigger. So you now need three or four people because it, it's, it's really catching up. I mean, this with the cats out of the bag. Smart, connected, high-performance, intelligent, IP-centric network buildings are, are never turning back, right? And so that's why I just, I, I love your community. I love the guys who've been building 
smart buildings, designing smart buildings for the last 30 years, using tools, you know, from, like you said, the five majors or some of these big companies, but IT is arriving in our industry. Yeah, and it has been, but, but this year more than ever, there's going to be a really strong IT um, feel about uh, IBCon because the big players are coming in. Well, Jim, I, I want to hop in here real quick and, and something I think a lot of people don't consider because obviously you guys are a bonanza of the latest technology, the latest opportunities, but you got to bring a salesperson too because the reason being is because it's the only conference I know where you can go learn about great technology and also the customers are there that are interested in that technology. You're never going to find another event where those two come together. It's, you know, you know it's, it's just a fantastic investment. Well, our, our tagline is 50 billion square feet of real estate represented by executive leader, executive thought leaders, the decision makers who have their checkbooks. I mean, they're, they're looking for things. And, and that's what I, I, I believe is one of the most powerful things of the conference. If, if the owners went to one conference and the integrators went to another conference and manufacturers went to another conference, the dynamics of how that communication takes place means it's three times as long, right? Because the chance of them running into each other on the streets after their conferences is very low. The fact that they're all in the same room and they have the possibility of running into each other in the hall or, or uh, sitting next to each other in a session or having a beer, that's why it, it can move faster. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, 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 no, hang on, Kenny. I got to tell a story because we were at one of your conferences, the one in San Antonio. <laughs> oh, you probably were, but uh, we're in San Antonio. There's this guy that's sitting there. He's got the suspenders on, got the Gordon Gecko hair, slick back, sitting there with, you know, he's got an entourage around him, right? So I get curious about this guy. And uh, the biggest, we have a big building in Atlanta was one of our projects. Anyway, so I get curious about him on a break. I start talking to him. And uh, he tells me, yeah, he, he owns real estate. And, and I said, yeah, I'm in Atlanta. I said, what, what buildings do you do in Atlanta? I told him, because well, I own that building. And this is, this is a guy who owned the building that's sitting in one of your cybersecurity conferences. And uh, you know, where else are you going to find that? Yeah. And, and, and I'm really proud. I'd say after 20 years, I'm really proud of the community aspect. I mean, these are sometimes harsh competitors. I mean, some of the top retail people, they compete with each other. The office people, they compete for those tenants. But some, for some reason, when they get into these rooms at our conferences, they let all that down and they kind of say, I can't do this by myself. This is too big. This is too complex. Then, and then we have to collaborate. Oh, and by the way, another paradigm shift that we're going to be talking about at the conference, which I pretty sure none or very few of your audience, my audience is aware of, is China tech. Okay. Who knows who Huawei, ZTE, Baidu, uh, Alibaba, and, and does anybody know who they are? Does anybody know that their technology is getting better than ours? Uh, does anybody know they're going to, Huawei, for example, 5G, the next big thing in telecommunications, Huawei has a 30% market share behind Ericsson at 17 and Nokia at 13. Where did that come from? Okay, and so, and, and, and there's going to be a whole bunch of issues around the fact that this rising superpower has got technology prowess than never before seen in the history. How does that impact the smart building? It really does. Okay. Well, Jim, you gave us a good preview of that at the controls con and it, it was, uh, it was, it was incredible and it was kind of scary uh, to be honest with you. Uh, and no, Derek, that was a different story, but that's a great story. Cause uh, I remember how excited you were after meeting that individual, and how cool he was. I was talking about some of the business networking that took place, Jim, where I watched you kind of introduce party A to party B and then they went to lunch and came back and, a transaction occurred and then about a month later another transaction occurred because it was that level of you know of networking and and you know aligning like you say collaboration yeah. we've, we've seen a spirit of collaboration that's uh, unprecedented but it's how quickly it's necessary to be able to be on board this this paradigm shift that you're talking about well i'm i'm proud that over 20 years we started in 99 we were told to go to asia in the early 2000s got freaked out how far ahead they were of us came back, screamed and yelled, then went to Europe, was a little underwhelmed, and then went to the Middle East. We kind of followed the money and saw Sheikh Mohammed connecting 4,000 buildings back to Pacific Controls Command and Control Center. And we go, we're, we're, we're behind. And we came back and we kind of you know, yelled and screamed and huffed and puffed and people threw tomatoes at us. They said, relax. But little by little, the challenge was accepted. And now I believe the, the most sophisticated smart building conversations in the world are happening in, in the U.S. right now, yeah, and, 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 and I'm not saying it should just happen in the U.S. because we're a global world, and, I, and I, I'm a global thinker, 
but I'm proud of the fact that, you know, we, we spent a lot of time in this community and they took the challenge and now some of the best, biggest, most engaging smart building projects in the world are happening right here. And you're going to see some of them in the general session. You know, but Jim, I, I think we got to acknowledge you and your team for that. You and Howard and Lisa, because I, I think without Jim Young, there'd be some uh, Chinese version of Jim Young and, and everybody be going to the conference over there. So kudos to you for. Well, it's not, it, you know, I got a phenomenal team. I mean, you know, you say me, Howard and Lisa, but boy, there's a whole team of people. You know, they never get the, the credit. They're never on the cameras, but they are, they're a machine. Um, they're, they're dedicated. They take what they do serious. Uh, good is never good enough. They, they always push to be better. And they, and, and, and we got a couple times a year where we get together at these events that we get to, you know, take care of our customers and we're pretty customer service oriented. So and it's all about, you know, people working hard and sharing and collaborating and, and making, um, you know, making these buildings better. Uh, not just from an energy standpoint, an operation standpoint, but now from an experience standpoint, another huge trend, occupant experience, got to have my cell phone, got to control the building, right? I don't know in your world, you know, on, a, on the street, how many of your integrators are talking about occupant experience? Huge topic. Yeah. I mean, we, we got, I think we, uh, we got that from you too. The, uh, the whole three thirty three hundred pair, you know, uh, matrix of, of, of what, where the money came out of the impacts on. Yeah, yeah, that was an, that was an amazing, uh, you know, tell takeaway that we brought back, and, and everybody interpreted it on their own level. But then that was soon espoused by every major manufacturer had their version of that. And just I, I would so say if we've been driving at a speed over the last five years of five ten miles an hour, coming out of this conference, our industry is going to be doing twenty five thirty miles an hour. It's the the jump this year is is that big. So let me ask you a question. So let's imagine sort of know what you know, because I think you have a pretty good idea of, of some of the stuff that's going to come out of this conference. That you're an integrator. You hear this show. You show up at this conference. You're wowed. You come home. What's the first thing you do with your business? Okay, so the first thing is, before you even go to the conference, you got to study, just like in high school and college, study the program, okay? To your point earlier, it's too much. If you come into this place and you just bounce around and go to the exhibit floor and look at the program, find an interesting session, you are getting one-tenth out of the conference, okay? And for example, uh, what should I do on pre-con? Well, if I'm an integrator, I better be at that cyber forum because if I don't speak cyber to my customers, I'm not getting jobs. It's true that. Right from then, I go to grab a bite to eat. What's best for me in the afternoon? Well, CIO, I'm not a CIO, I'm not a COO. I don't need to go to boot camp. I'm an integrator. I'm going to the integrator roundtable. They got an event specifically devoted for me. So that whole first day, I got something to do every minute. And then at the end of the night, I'm going to go have a beer and hopefully run into one of those guys that own big buildings, right? Because they all go to the same party, right? Then I go to the general session to kind of get the big picture. And then I got, I got 150 sessions, call it, you know, maybe 75, 80 on the IBCon site. You know, do, do I need to understand what a building network is, right? So uh, do I, you know, what's an operating system? Is Tritium the operating system? What's this Microsoft thing? Edge device for cloud computing, what goes to the cloud, what stays on site. There's very sophisticated topics, right? 5G, do I care about 5G? Should my telecommunications inside my boards be 802.11 or 5G? All of these questions are gonna be debated, answered, you know, more questions. So that's, that's the first thing, okay? Study and then attack the conference, have a mission, have an objective, and, and, and you will come out of there five years ahead. Okay, then if you just go, wow, that was a fire hose. And then Monday morning, um, you got to assess what you learned. What did you see? Not just the little stuff. You got to look for the, for the icebergs, the big stuff that's, that could put a hole in your ship or, you know, provide an insane opportunity for you. And, and I, you know, with my vantage point, this is a year of big, big, big changes. And, and so Monday morning, if I'm an integrator, um, I'm calling Ken and, and Eric and saying, what the heck just happened? Uh, right. And, 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 and then, as I mentioned, the control cons, you know, maybe some strategic meetings within the industry. Everybody can't afford IT people. Let's create a bank. I know that's what um, uh, Scott does at Cochrane, right? He provides resources. But the, the single most important thing I do is you got to start adding IT people to your teams. That, yeah. That's Monday morning because this is not about, you know, just microcontrollers or, or uh, digital devices. This is networks. This is, you know, technology layers, programming um, that, that the BAS integrators typically haven't seen. Right. And, and if you don't have that skill set on your team, you're not going to be able to survive. 
I mean, you know, Kenny and I have had a, a theme we've sort of been talking about. We're seeing more and more of it the last several episodes, which is it's, it's important what you know, but it's also almost equally important who you know. And then you got to be able to partner with them to do that stuff. So the great news we got, our listeners out there, is it's not too late to register. And we actually have a discount code, thanks to Jim and team, that, uh, that our community can use. Kenny, do you have that discount code handy? I sure do. Uh, we have it on the, the post uh, where we register now with this promo code. It's RC19CTGUEST1, and that will get you a 10% discount code for the, um, the integrators and the end users. We'll get a 10% discount, so that's a, a great uh, you know, carrot to give people. And Jim, I just want to say one more thing, too, is the people that I've talked to uh, personally and, 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 and roused some interest and in, in whatever, they're sending four and five people. We had a, a yeah. Northern Virginia that's a friend. college. They're, yeah. they're, they're sending the team down. And then we had a local guy saying, you know, how many people should we send? And, and so I basically told him about, like you said, you've you got to pick a champion in each department. And, and to Eric's point, if you don't have a voice, the guy that understands the complete story, he doesn't have to be the total expert, but he has to know how to link the pieces together. Because so much of this is, is network. So much of this is they're building a channel. And then some of the things you've told us, it, it puts chills down my back because it means, like you said, some people see it as a threat, but most people should see it as an opportunity. And you need to build the channel, get the ladder. <laughs> out and find out where you're where you can be a part of this it's a little scary it's a, it's a big change but i'm telling you I, i've known people in the it world that were the first guys to see windows nt and they ran with that 30 years ago and i think they were retired by the time they were 40 okay i mean th this is bigger and better than anything you've ever done in the smart building world just got to get over that little hump and can i can i share my screen with you guys for a second sure. be i want to awesome. show you that that thing we had up earlier um I mean, this is just to kind of give you an idea of the, um, of the uh, uh, complexity. Can you guys see that? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so this is the Microsoft Azure Sphere. This is one of the illustrations, okay? Uh, microcontroller, IoT devices, edge devices, edge app appliances, edge stack, and then the hyperscale cloud. This is it, this is not just one little piece. This is an architecture. So if you look at this as an integrator, you're going, I don't understand that. That's why you got to come to the conference. On top of that, you've got, um, you've got a, um, let me see if I've got uh, the other one. This is the ecosystem, okay? So out of nowhere, Microsoft builds this platform. It's actually been over five years and they're investing $5 billion in their IoT strategy, which building automation is part of. But let's just look at some of these players. These are people we know. There's Johnson Controls, there's ABB, there's Honeywell. And then there's the consulting firms like Accenture and PwC. Jim, that, that, that screen didn't come up yet. Um, we're still oh, seeing the original screen. I'm sorry. Let me, um, let me find it. Uh, there we go. You see it now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if you just look at these, these, these are people we know, right? Oh, boy. I mean, and, and, and this is within 18 months, 24 months, they built this ecosystem. So if, if you're an integrator and you come to IBCon, you got a whole floor to go see. But if you don't devote two, three hours to the Microsoft Pavilion and understand who are these people? Well, where, where, why are they in my industry? Where, where do I belong? I, I, well, good grief. I mean, if you look at that partner ecosystem, you go systems integrators, advisors, solution providers, solution aggregators, and devices. I mean, that is, that's uh, how many millions and billions of, of uh, participation? I mean, that's huge. Ooh. Smart buildings in, as the subset of IoT are going to, um, this is the year. History will show 18, 19, 20 as the year that we jumped. We went from mini computers to distributed PCs to the cloud. You know how all our consumer technology, business technology changes? This is the year that something we've been talking about for almost 20 years has meet. You, got, you can order components. They've got SKU numbers that you guys will have in your inventory someday. Um, hopefully this year, you should spend time at the pavilion and make friends and partners. And um, this is a whole new opportunity business for you and your whole ecosystem. Well, there you go. And listen, take advantage. Listen, the one thing that's been true, true throughout history is people that procrastinate wind up waiting and generally become waiters. People that don't can take advantage of this. Uh, Jim, man, thank you so much for sharing this with our community. Thank you so much for the discount code to our community. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's, let's, let's get on this. Uh, well, we are there for you guys. We're there for, you know, our communities. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're not, uh, we move quick. We keep our head to the ground, our ear to the ground. And we just want, we want to enable you to be more successful. 
And that's through information and collaboration. That's simple. Jim Young, Realcom Ibicon. Realcom Ibicon is the best site to go to, right? Uh, yep. for, and, yeah, just go real, Realcom is the fastest way to get there. Uh, yeah. And then you just go conferences and they're all listed. Yeah, we'll mean. put the links in the show notes. But yeah, you should be going to, the, you should subscribe to their newsletter as well. I mean, they just put great content out. Jim, thanks for what you do for the, thanks for what you do for the industry. We appreciate you. Thank you guys. Awesome work. I looking forward to seeing you. Oh, actually, I'll, Kenny or uh, Eric, I think I'll see you this week at uh, Haystack. Right? You I'll see, yeah, I'll see you at the Haystack. I'll there. see you there and then we'll see you in, in June in Nashville. Look yep. forward to it, my friend. Jim, thanks so much. Thank you guys. All right. Jim Young. Great stuff for Jim, and we got a code. So, hopefully, we'll see you guys at Realcom Ibicon in Nashville, Tennessee. Kenny, we got a couple of posts to get to this week. What do you want to talk about? We can't talk about them all, but let's talk about a couple. Well, you know, we uh, we got to talk about the next thing coming up. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to give you the uh, the, the Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Laurent Venere. Uh, what do they have in common? That's a pretty cool post. Uh, but you talked about the uh, the creating, uh, you know, the creation of value and the future of technology. So it's kind of a cool thing putting one of our CEOs from Acuity in, in a very, very high level profile CEO. That, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. And if you did, had a chance to check that out, Kenny, I saw uh, Laurent speak at uh, ControlsCon. And I tell you what, man, he called the future and it, you know, it reminded me a little bit of, you know, if we've been around in JFK point to the middle, but we're going to go there. Everybody's going, what the heck are you talking about? Cause he called for two things. He says the business is going to double in the very near future. He says, if you want to be part of it, there are a couple of things that need to happen. But one of them is he's calling for is a 30% reduction in time from the idea of Kenny Smyers dreams up a control in his, or, or a product in his head to the time it actually gets installed which is a tall order, but you know what? I think he's right on with it. And if you disagree with that, just look at the stuff Elon Musk and Richard Branson, and some of these other people are doing. And so I think we have to start thinking in that vein. So I say, uh, Lawrence, a gift, Lawrence is a gift to our industry. And if you did get a chance to see that video, it's worth listening. I was inspired. Were you inspired? Well, yeah, the first thing I got a kick out of is he came out of retirement for the position because he, he believed in it. Uh, you know, he, he, he knew that was something he liked to do and he knew that there was a lot of meat on the bone. In fact, one of the things he said too was lighting, uh, you know, you know, don't hold back moving forward with the lighting until you get the whole enchilada. In other words, it's a dream boat uh, project to integrate everything, HVAC and lighting and everything, but don't hold up lighting, uh, waiting to get everybody else on board. So to get lighting in first, make sure it's future proofed uh, and make sure right. we can integrate to it later, but move forward with lighting because you can save so much money so quickly. It's so evident. It's so manifest proven, you know, that, uh, so I, I got to kick out of that. It was good, good, good stuff. Well, the one thing you got to say about Lauren is he's definitely not an ABC Darian. Agreed. <laughs> Well, you know what? Speaking of, of transitions, what does the next generation have to say about HVAC and building controls? And, and uh, again, we're, we're going to feature two of these guys, uh, you know, that have done, uh, they're starting to fill the shoes that we started out, but they're much, much younger and they're doing it much, much earlier in their careers, but they really have got a sense of what we're doing. And I think they believe in it and they, they espouse some of the things we're doing and they're helping taking some of that workload. Talk about the next generation HVAC well, smart controls people. So first of all, if you don't know Aaron Gorka yet from Ant Technologies, he's somebody you want to know. He's a young Canadian ex-hockey player, cool dude. Aaron stepped in to the Next Generation Innovation Podcast, did a great job. I think he did about seven episodes solo, right? Just did a fantastic job. And to your point, Kenny, I mean, I love these guys. You know, Aaron came in and said, how can I help? Can I do this podcast? Took it over, has been just doing a great job with, has a great product too, Ant Technologies. Encourage you to check that out. Uh, and Aaron's been doing it for a while. Then Brent Burroughs is uh, one of our great customers here in Atlanta. I uh, actually, you know, Brent's dad, uh, Pat, has been one of my long term term friends, long term customers. Brent's been in the business now for a while. Man, he is a rising superstar. Okay. And Brent reached out. I get a phone call on the weekend, one weekend, and it's Brent. I'm thinking, okay, must be having a, a, a technical problem <laughs> because. Hey man, I was just wondering, I, I, I'd really like to get in the podcast. I think it's a really effective form of, uh, of, of communication. I know Aaron and Aaron and I talked about maybe, you know, doing the podcast together. You think that'd be okay. I said, Brent be more than okay. That would be absolutely fantastic. And you know, Brent is, Brent's like a sprinter. It's like, we get him started with that. Next thing you know, he is doing HVAC control tech tips. He's sending me videos once or twice a week, a really, really good content. 
And he and Aaron together, uh, you get to see them live because it was a control con. The first time we got a chance to record an episode live together and uh, it happened there. And we posted it this week. It's great stuff. What I'd say about those guys is they're brilliant. They offer a fresh perspective. And I think their tagline is often irreverent, often irreverent, but never boring. So I think they're going to really appeal to our audience. Well, yeah, and then Brent did another great post. Uh, you, we got that up today. Uh, having trouble discovering backnet points on your train Voyager system. Uh, you know, this is the guy that uh, you know can make the cake too. In other words, he knows the ingredients. He knows he has fun with it, but he could also. He's out uh, there cooking every day. Well, he can make things turn off and on and work, yeah. and then you know discover stuff and and show you uh, make it make make somebody else's life a little bit easier by showing some of the. Uh, how he was confounded, but figured out a way to get things working. So that was a good stuff. Well, yeah. And Kenny, I want, I want to just sort of uh, follow back up on that too, because we've, we've had some other people that reached out and said, Hey, you know, we'd like to participate too. We do have the control trends podcast network. We've been building that for a while. It's there. If you want to get a podcast started, Kenny and I can take the mystery of it out of you for it. We got a platform we can promote it on. We can do the editing, we can do the EQ, we can make sure it gets up, we can do the hosting, we can make sure it gets up on iTunes, all that stuff. All you basically have to do is just do what you already know. Take your, take your phone, get a microphone like Kenny has, talk into the phone, send us the content, we can produce it, we can do the rest. So if you're interested in that, let us know. we got several people that uh, have expressed an interest, but I'll tell you, Kenny, you know what the biggest problem with that? You know what the biggest problem with podcasting is? No. There's never a good time to do it. I you know, I mean, and, and, you know, and once you get started and getting started is the hardest part. Once you do the first two episodes, you're hooked because you're going to see what a great effect it has. And, and, and it's, a, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You put one out and then people find it. And uh, so, but also if you're an HVAC tech or building automation control specialist and you've got some knowledge you want to share, okay, but you don't have time to go find a YouTube channel, edit the video or anything like that. You can do what Brent does. Send us the files. Um, we can do it. We'll give you credit for it. We'll post it on our YouTube channel. You'll get, you know, a lot of exposure. It's a great way to, uh, contribute to the community and at the same time get exposure for yourself and your company. So if you're interested in that, let us know. Already. Eric, we have two major events coming up. We're going to talk briefly on both of them. Uh, one is the, uh, Haystack 4.0 is coming. Uh, what is it and why? Well, get to the 2019 Haystack Connect, May 13th through the 15th, 2019, in San Diego, California, and you will find out from the people that have made it happen. Uh, it's a great post by John Petsy, but he really goes into, again, it's another rehashing. It's a Haystack 4, builds on eight years of experience applying Haystack across thousands of buildings worldwide. Uh, from the inputs of the practitioners from the community throughout that time has grown. The collaboration is huge, and they've all participated in the activities that are going to be uh, on display and, and talked about and networked about at the uh, Haystack Connect. And you're going to be there, so tell us a little bit about your thoughts. Well, I am so excited for that because we've been to every one of them. And between what Mark Petsy, I'm uh, excuse me, uh, John Petsy, Mark Petock, uh, you know, Jason Briggs, Scott Mench. I mean, the whole community is phenomenal and uh, it's going to be great. And again, follow us on Instagram, follow us on, uh, on um, YouTube because we're going to be live streaming. We're going to be capturing videos and uh, we're going to bring it back to you. If you can't, first of all, try to be there. But if you can't be there, we're going to do everything we can to bring it back to you. Oops, you just muted yourself, buddy. Yeah, that was a, that was a good, that was, <laughs> I did that on purpose. No, I, uh, yeah. <clears throat> no, the, um, the next event coming up is the EZIO World Conference in, uh, in, in Amsterdam. And it is, uh, I'm really excited about that one. I, uh, I've, I've, I've got myself ready to go. Like you said, now you're, you're, you're packing two bags. You're packing one for the West Coast, San Diego, and then you're packing one for Amsterdam. So God bless you and, and uh, take your vitamins because it's, uh, it takes its toll traveling around, uh, but um, I'm very excited about this one. Uh, we, we've had correspondence with uh, you know, the, the, the leaders out there, but Johan Chakarod, Chakarod and his team, uh, Cohen and Bo, and, and uh, we're going to see Mike Marston. We're going to see all the easy I.O. players. We're going to see Chat, and it's, it's a world conference. So there's people literally from all over India that we, we, we've known over the years, Australia, South Africa. Uh, we know we've got some U.S. folks coming. We know Frank Whitmer from uh, – Brody Precision's coming. We know that Rick Jones from Relevant Solutions coming, and uh, these guys are 
premier thought leaders and master systems integrator uh, partners, the master systems distributors actually, but they, they've just, uh, they know all about the business and to see them there and have them contribute. Uh, just real quickly, it starts on the Sunday, May 19th. There's gonna be a pre-event gathering. Uh, Monday, the, pre -con or the conference is going to be at the Johan Kuyev Arena in Amsterdam. Beautiful uh, stadium football, soccer, I'm sorry, soccer uh, or football, I guess, depends on where, where you're located. Uh, and then uh, there's going to be a, a remarkable uh, dinner, reception, awards, and guest speakers. And then the Tuesday will be the wrap up. There's going to be some CPT training and advanced sessions one and two. But um, an overview of the, some of the speakers uh, Adrian Forzo. Director Phase Two, MEP uh, Battersea, a big EZIO project. Uh, Tom Randall, Head of Building Optimization Services. Richard Reed, Smart Buildings Leader, Control Trends Award Engineer of the Year. Uh, Tommy Haganis, remember Tommy? He, oh, yeah. uh, he's, yeah. uh, he, he's doing really well. He's, uh, he's, he's doing the reality of IoT and the impacts on the built environment. And then we, environment, then we have Don uh, Kukamat, and then we have Severine Demu student at the here at Watt University, M, uh, major uh, ME engineering, architectural engineering, uh, the biological, oh, I can't even say it, but anyhow, the building of the future. It's a building that they, he's working on. And uh, it, so it's just gonna be a great show. It's gonna be a, a hugely entertaining uh, venue because uh, it's just always exciting to be in a, in a European environment, one of the prettiest cities in, in, in the world. And uh, I'll see you there. Well, that's gonna be great. Well, Kenny, you know, I mean, I think we've all had the experience of knowing a childhood friend that we grew up with, right? Right. And then they go on and do something really spectacular. You know that feeling you're just so proud of them and all that. So, you know, I have a special place in my heart for EZIO, as I know you do too, Mad Mike Marston, Lem and those guys, because sure. we were starting, we had just started Control Trends about the time that they came to the States and were promoting their product. It was like, you know, we were in kindergarten together and we just sort of grew. And now I'm looking at them and going, man, I'm so proud of those guys, man. They're just such a global player. They're doing so well, and I'm really, really proud of those guys. So Mike, Lim, Johan, the rest of the team, Gordon, man, congratulations. You guys have done really, really well. And you know what? They're just teenagers now. They haven't even grown up yet. When they, when they get full grown, watch out. Yeah, and to your point, the potential, and, and again, there's a new product release is probably the most exciting thing about it is because they've set the standard uh, in, in many regards, the FS controller, the FS32 a field server controller. It's just the power quad core processor. Now the first guys to, to get it done, basically you talk about the man on the moon and then uh, the concept, uh, you know, Lim Hoon Shot being just a dynamic thinker, you know, figuring out, you know, what's easy to do, fit the shoe uh, on the foot or, you know, make, make, uh, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you make a controller that has the most, uh, you know, up to date, uh, best profile, smallest footprint, and, and, and make it fast and make it secure, make it robust, you know. And, and I think the concept was, you know, he reverse engineered what he wanted done and he put uh, IO onto the, the smallest, most robust router and created a concept that I think uh, is leaving a lot of people scratching their heads because it's such a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? But uh, I think well said, Kenny. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of go, it was kind of an obvious sort of play and Lem just picked up on it. Brilliant guy. They're all brilliant, man. So, uh, so if you haven't had a chance to go to the global conference yet, I think there, you could probably still go. You'd have to be impulsive to get over there, but I got to tell you, man, we've made friends from all around the world over there. It's something to be able to hear the commonalities we all have together. And, and I got to tell you, funny story. One of the first ones we went to, uh, you know, I, I get on the bus, there'd be a bus because these guys entertain you like nobody's business. I mean, it is just top hat. You learn stuff, but man, uh, they're just, they're great hosts every place we've been. But I think it was when we were in Madrid and we, you and I get separate, I get on the bus and that's, I know what this is, I know this one. Where's Kenny? Where's Kenny? And they get it. He, 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 Kenny's dead. Kenny's dead. I couldn't figure out like, every time I'd say that they go, Kenny's dead. And they giggle, right? I'd never seen South Park before, but apparently you, have you seen that show? I did, but I, ne I never saw that, that part. And I, I probably wouldn't have liked it anyhow, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah cause I, you're I, the one who always was dying, but Eric and Kenny from South Park, man. So <laughs> All right, so to, to all our friends from uh, uh, Europe and Asia, we can't wait to see you here in about a week or week and a half and uh, looking forward to it.
All right, Eric, we had two or three uh, uh, just really important posts. One was the Tritium Talk webinar, the, the mobile-friendly PX, and, and, the, and the warning to update your, your software, both from Tritium Niagara and also from Optergy. Optergy New Enterprise version 2.4.5 was released, and, and there's just an adamant request. Please do not delay. Update your sites immediately, and uh, we have the links on control trends that you could go to and get these important informations to make sure that you're protected and your customers are protected. Eric, we had a really neat uh, post uh, that we, uh, you know, we, we, we were fortunate enough to track this thing at, at the RealCom IBCon, the exception. And, and the, the very cool thing about this is it's another Atlanta person that you are very intimately uh, familiar with because I believe they used to work with, he used to work directly with you guys. Um, and it's the step, um, it's called, the post title is called, You Are Invited to the Launch of a Step in STEM Automation Skills Training, Education, and Promotion in STEM. And, and the remarkable thing about STEM is that, uh, you know, it is our uh, national initiative now to catch up to the rest of the world in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the emphasis on mathematics and science and also the emphasis on getting the minorities and getting um, females involved in industries and getting them involved in the science side of things again. And uh, we had Brian Lavelle, uh, he, he reached out and through LinkedIn uh, to your point, and he told us about this incredible, uh, you know, event that they have coming up. And I, I just want to talk real quickly, uh, you know, about some of the highlights uh, that come out of his, his research. And that is that there's presently 20,000, uh, over 20,000 vacancies in our industry. Uh, and, and this is an industry that's lucrative. And he makes a very strong point that the average, the beginning salary in this industry is 44,000 and tops out at an average of 122K. So it's a lucrative in industry. Presently, it's dominated by white males. 86.4% uh, males, white males are in the industry running the uh, building automation specialty. 1.4% uh, are females. So 1.4% of 472,000 BAS specialists, 1.4%. So obviously there's a large gap uh, for women and minorities that they really want to do. So a step in STEM is a national initiative to build awareness about BAS and STEM career pathways. Uh, they're trying to get automation skills and, and standard training in, in a real world laboratory accepted uh, procedure, get it recognized by the national uh, classification agency and increase the uh, education uh, you know, at the college level to promote STEM and building automation. So well done, Brian. Uh, Brian is a brilliant, brilliant guy, Kenny. We've known him for years. And, and you know, we talked, as Ken St. Clair and others have talked about, you know, how the tribal knowledge is leaving the building. There's going to be a huge gap of qualified people to do our work. And Brian has been working tirelessly on this, getting people educated, and attracting people to the industry. So, uh, hey, if you're in Atlanta, you should definitely check that out. Uh, I would be there if I wouldn't be out at Haystack. I'd totally be there. Uh, you know, I feel bad I didn't uh, complete that. It's actually going to be held at the Georgia Piedmont Technical College, 495 North Indian Creek Drive, Clarkston, Georgia. Is that far from Atlanta? Uh, about, about, it's, it's east of Atlanta, probably about 30 minutes, not far. All righty. And it's Tuesday, May 14th, from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock. And we have the uh, information on the control trends. It's got the hot link to the registration and the person responsible to uh, register people, Ms. Uh, Mupfo Bratton. Uh, we have her uh, email and there's also a link to acp21.org. So uh, good stuff coming that's out of the Atlanta right. area. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right, brother, man, I think that's probably it. Our audience is probably ready for us to uh, go have a beer. They're probably ready to go have a beer. In our case, a cup of coffee with a beer. Well, yep, yep. The um, the show must go on, Eric. So you know. So you want to shake it up this time, and you want to do the outro, and I'll do the indeed. Nope. Nope. We're nope. gonna keep. Okay. I guess now I'm pretty good at this outro. Okay. Ready? Yep. Well, there you go. Another week on Control Talk. Now your HVAC and smart building controls, video cast, and podcast. A special thanks to our guest, Jim Young from Realcom Ibicon. It's not too late to stand to to sign up. Be there. We've got a code. You can save ten percent. Thanks to our audience for tuning in. Thank you to the man, the myth, the legend for being the man, the myth, the legend. So with that, remember, be bold, stay in control, and stay relevant. Indeed, Eric. Indeed.